Let's look at some sigma notation, guys. The sigma notation is something that's on the board. This little notation, the symbol here, this symbol is our sigma notation, and it implies summation, the sum of however many terms. Now you can see we've got our little expression over here, which is called ti, we don't know, whatever it is. There's always an expression or a formula on the side of the sigma notation. And see how i is unknown? We know what i is by looking at the bottom of the sigma notation and the top of the sigma notation. If you look on the bottom, guys, see how it says i equals to 1? That's what it starts with. So we start off by subbing in i equals to 1, then the next number up, which is 2, then 3, then 4, and then all the way to the number on top, which is n in this case. And then we add it all up. So the first one that I'll put in is i is 1. So if I replace the i with 1, it will be t1, isn't it? Now the next whole number up above 1 is going to be 2, so I replace the i with 2, so it'll be t2. And then t3, and then t4, t5 is going to be going on and on until i is n. So we go all the way to tn, and then we add it all up because it's sum notation. The sigma notation implies sum, so we add it all up and that will be our outcome. Alright guys, so keep that in mind. Make sure you know what the sigma notation implies. And let's try some questions. So question 1 says find, okay, gives us the sigma notation here which implies sum again. And the formula that we're going to be using is 2 to the power of n. And they tell you what n is. n equals to 1, so it starts with n equals to 1 all the way to n equals to 3. So, let's first start by n is 1, so we'll sub in n equals to 1. So the n's on the power, so replace the power with 1. And then plus, replace the power with 2. And then plus, replace the power with 3. So it's 2 to the power of 1, plus 2 to the power of 2, plus 2 to the power of 3. But we don't go any further, guys, because see, on top of the sigma notation, they say 3. So 3 is the largest one that we'll sub in. So we only go up to where n equals to 3. So we don't do anything further. So we'll simplify it. 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So add it all up for me, guys. It should be 14. All right, guys. So that's what I've got. That's my sigma notation. Um, the sum, what, it equal to in this question one. Let's go to question two. Again, they've got another sigma notation, and we've got 2 to the power of n again. But look at the numbers. We start with n equals to 1 again this time, but we go all the way to 20, so it's going to be quite a large series, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is do the same thing, and we'll find the pattern. So first of all, replace the n with 1. We start with 1, don't we? So I replace the n, which is the power, to 1, and then I replace it with 2 and then I replace it with 3, and then we make sure you're adding it up. It's summation, isn't it? So we're adding it up, and you can see the pattern is 2 to the power of 4, plus 2 to the power of 5, 2 to the power of 6, and we're going to go all the way to 2 to the power of 20. So the last one we're going to be having is 2 to the power of 20. I'm not actually going to write everything in between because that will waste too much time. That's going to spend... Um, take up too much of my time and my paper, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is go the shortcut. You guys can see that this is 2, then 4, then 8, and then you can see that it's going to be a geometric series. Can you see that, guys? And you can see each time we're multiplying by 2, because see how the powers are increasing by 1? So the common ratio is going to be our 2. So first term is 2, as the, you can see the first term in the series is 2, and then the common ratio, as I've mentioned, is also 2. You multiply 2 each time to get ex um, the every consecutive number, don't you? And you can see that the number of terms is simply 20. It starts from n equals to 1 all the way to n equals to 20. So the number of terms is simply 20. So we'll put that into our sum formula for our geometric series. Hopefully you guys are pretty familiar with this now. A is going to be our first term, which is 2. So I'll replace the A with 2. The common ratio is also 2. So I did 2 to the power of n. n is 20. And denominator r minus 1, r is 2. So again, I've put those values in. And just calculate that for me. You'll get a quite a large number, but that will be the sum. So it is quite large. So if you had to do it manually, adding every single one, that would take too much time. But if you use the geometric series formula, it's very, very simple. All right, guys. So you're going to first identify that it is a geometric series formula, though. Um, Sorry, geometric series. Because this one, each time you multiply two, you get the next number, don't you? So make sure you don't uh, identify that first. We'll go to the next one, question three. Again, I've got my sigma notation. The formula this time is a little bit different. It's two times three to the power of n. We start with n equals to one all the way to when n equals to 10. We'll do the same thing, guys. We'll start off with n equals to one. So I've replaced the n with one. So it's two times three to the power of one. Then you replace it with a two. So two times three to the power of two. And then you replace it with three. 
do times root of half three. And make sure you're adding because we're always um, doing some, aren't we? And then we're going all the way to when n equals to 10. So I've replaced the um, n here for the last one, 10. I'm not going to bother writing everything in between because it will just take too much time. Now, I can actually see that the first term is 2 times 3. In this case, it's 6. And can you see that we're multiplying by 3 each time to get every consecutive number? So again, it's a geometric series, guys. So where the common ratio is simply 3. We're multiplying by 3 each time, aren't we? So, it's the common ratio of 3. And how many terms are there? It starts with when n equals to 1 all the way to when n equals to 10. So the number of terms n must be 10. So again, we can just use our geometric series formula, the sum formula. Put it in, guys. A is 6. The common ratio is 3, n is going to be 10. So I've replaced them all in and calculate it for me. Again, it's quite a large number, so if you had to do it manually, it will take quite a lot of time. So go the easy way, guys. Use the geometric series formula.